Hi, and welcome back, everyone, and uh, welcome back to Unit 9 Notes. Today, we are going to talk about Part 2, and so obviously, Part 2 is going to build on Part 1, and that what we're going to attempt to do today is take those ideas that we talked about yesterday about looking at these 3D figures, these solids, and thinking about what's the base and finding perimeter of the base, area of the base, but then today, we are going to take those things and extend them to calculate what we call lateral area and surface area. And so lateral area and surface area are different measurements that we use to describe these 3D figures and the space that they take up. Um, and this is just one way to do that. And again, it builds on what we started yesterday. And so let's take what we did yesterday, let's review kind of that thing, and then let's take it into the main component here of part two. And so the first thing we need to understand is what kind of shapes are we working with? What do we call them? And what characteristics do these shapes have? So the first thing I want to write, and I'm going to do this at the top of our notes, is I want to define prism real quick. So we're going to work with things today called prisms. You can see the on the learning target, target 25, the bullet point says surface area of prisms and cylinders. So first, a prism is a solid with two faces that we call, so two faces called bases. Now it has more than two faces, but there are just two specifically that we call bases, and these bases are parallel to each other and congruent. Parallel and congruent. So they're you know the same size. And one's on one side of the shape, one's the other one is directly across the shape from it. Now that's a that's what a prism is defined as. It has two bases. Now there's something else we're going to talk about, and that's going to be called lateral faces. And so remember, all of these deal with 3D bigger figures, right? And what lateral faces of these figures are are the other faces of a prism. And so basically, those are all the faces that are not the bases. So in a prism, these are rectangles. And they are like the walls of our 3D figure. So they are rectangle walls. Those are what the lateral faces are. And then the other faces, the two of them, they can be any shape, rectangle, triangle, circle, whatever. And those are considered bases. Now, you're going to need some practice with this and some practice like looking at the shapes that we got coming up to really feel comfortable about it. And so let's get into that. Um, right before we do that, let's get a few formulas here, though. So again, what we are trying to figure out today is surface area of prisms and cylinders. That's going to involve calculating the lateral area first. So the lateral area is the area of the faces that are not bases. And then our surface area is we take that lateral area and add the bases to it. And so to find the lateral area, it's going to be perimeter of the base times height of our object. And so, um, again, lateral area is the sum of the areas of the lateral faces. So not the bases again. And one more time, that formula is lateral area equals perimeter of the base times height of the prism. So let's write that down. P equals perimeter of base. And H equals height of the prism. So if we know those two things, the distance around the bottom of the shape and the height of the entire solid, we can figure out the lateral area. And then our surface area, the surface area is sum of the areas of all faces. Basically, what we're going to do is we are going to take, so our surface area will equal what our lateral area was plus two of our bases. So LA is lateral area. And big B is the area of the base. 
And so it will know the lateral area from doing the step up above, and then we'll just have to add in two times whatever the area of our base is to finalize the surface. Now, that is a lot of conversation. So let's actually work to do this. Now, we need to understand what kind of solids we're working with and which shape is actually the base. Remember yesterday I talked about we name these shapes based off of the shape of their base. And so our base here is going to be a triangle. And then what we've got are these rectangle walls that connect to our other triangle base that's on the other side of this shape, right? And so those rectangle walls are our lateral faces, right? Rectangle walls are lateral faces. And then the bases are the other ones. And the base in this shape is a triangle. And so we would call this a triangular prism. And that's huge because we're going to need to draw the base in this next step. And now we know the base is a triangle. So I'm going to draw that triangle. You'll notice there are tick marks through all three sides. So all three sides are the same. They are congruent. And each side is 3.5 centimeters. So perimeter or the base, that's what this little P is. That's not so bad. It's just 3.5 plus 3.5 plus 3.5. And when we add those 3.5s together, we're going to get 10.5 centimeters. All right, so that's perimeter. Now, remember, big B is area of the base. And this is going to change depending on what our base is. So we can tell our base right now is a triangle. So area of a triangle is going to be base times height divided by 2. Now, our base is 3.5. What we don't have in this picture is our height. Remember, this is our height right here. And so we need to solve for that. And as always, when we draw that in, it creates a right triangle and half of our triangle. And then it cuts that bottom base in half. So 3.5 divided by 2 is 1.75. So each half here is 1.75. And so then we can find H by working with this right triangle here. And H squared plus 1.75 squared is going to equal 3.5 squared. And so let's finish all of this out. If we square 1.75, we're going to get roughly 3.06. And 3.5 squared is 12.25. And so now we want to subtract 3.06 from both sides. And we'll get that h squared equals... Um, 9.2 roughly. So then to finish this off and actually get our height, we'll take the square root and we will see that h equals roughly 3.03. .03. So that's our height. Now remember what we found that so that we could find the area of our base, so the area of this triangle. So the triangle base again is 3.5. So the area of this triangle is going to be 3.5 times our height, which we just found, which is 3.03. .03. And then we divide that by 2. And 3.5 times 3.03 .03 divided by 2 is about 5.3. And then area is um, square units, right? So centimeters squared. So we've got our perimeter of our base and the area of our base. Now, remember, this is a bigger problem today. We need to use these things now to find lateral area and surface area. So, right, we use perimeter of the base to find lateral area. And then once we have lateral area, we're good, and we're going to use that to find surface area along with big B, which is area of our base. Lateral area, right? Lateral area is perimeter times height. Now, perimeter we solve for, right? Perimeter of base, that's 10.5. So, this is going to be 10.5 times however high or however tall this prism is. Now let's look back at our prism. And I want you to look at this 21 centimeters. That is what's considered the height of the prism. It's the distance of the um, rectangular walls that are connecting our two bases. So see how this side connects one of our triangle bases to the other triangle base? That's what the height of a prism is. And so that's the height we want to plug in for our lateral area. Perimeter was 10.5. We found that by adding all the 3.5s together around our triangle. 
and then the height of the prism is 21. So 10.5 times 21 is 220.5 centimeters squared. And now that is our lateral area. So perfect. And now we're going to use that in the next piece to find surface area, right? Because now we're working with this equation right here. And surface area is going to equal lateral area plus 2 times big B. Well, we just found lateral area. So that's 220.5 and then plus 2. And then remember, we solve for big B over here. Big B is the area of our base, which was the area of that triangle. That is 5.3 centimeters. So we'll do 2 times 5.3. And then make sure you plug that into your calculator, you know, um, detailed, exactly as we've got it. And when you do that, you should get 231.1. And these are still area, so centimeters squared, square units. Everything today will be square units because lateral area and surface area is all area still. All right, so as you can see, these are pretty huge problems. As you can see in this grid, everything deals with, let's find perimeter of base first and area of base first, and then we can piece together these bigger lateral areas and surface areas using these formulas. And remember, P and B all deal with the base. So you've got to be able to recognize the base, and then you got to be able to know like what shape is it, because big B is the area of that shape, and it changes depending on if you're working with a circle or a rectangle or a triangle, right? So let's go to the next problem. This is a Pringles can, so we would consider this to be a cylinder. Cylinder. And a cylinder has a circle base. It's a circle base, so we can draw the circle. As you can see, they have given us a diameter of three. So the diameter equals three, um, which means a radius, which is half of that, is going to equal 1.5, right? And that's crucial. We need to know diameter and radius to find area of a circle and perimeter of a circle. Remember, when talking about perimeter of a circle, we can also call perimeter of a circle circumference. And that has a formula. It is just pi times diameter. And so our diameter, remember, was 3. So our circumference, or aka perimeter, will be pi times 3, which, as an exact uh, answer, is just 3 pi. And this would be inches, right? Three pi inches. Or if you throw three pi into your calculator, you will get roughly 9.4 inches when rounded. And so these are our perimeter. This is the distance around our circle, which is our base for a cylinder, right? Then for big B, which is the area of the base, area of a circle is pi r squared. And so we just want to plug our radius in this time. So pi times 1.5 squared. And when we throw that into our calculator, this I'll do this one with you. Pi times 1.5 squared is going to be second. Pi, parentheses, 1.5. Close the parentheses and square it. We get 7.1, roughly. 7.1 when we round. 7.1. And this is area, so inches squared. Now, remember, we find perimeter and area of the base to be able to do lateral area and surface area formula. So let's start with lateral area. It's perimeter times the height of our cylinder. So perimeter times height. We just found the perimeter. It's 9.4. So we'll do 9.4. And then the height of our prism. Remember, the height is the distance of the side that connects our two bases. So that is this 9. So 9.4 times 9, and when we type that into our calculator, we should get roughly 84.8 inches squared, and that is our lateral area. And then remember, for surface area, it is just lateral area plus 2 times the area of our base. So our lateral area, so lateral area plus 2 big B. Our lateral area we already got, that is 84.8 and then plus 2b, remember we just found big B over here, that's 7.1, so plus 2 times 7.1. And when we type that into our calculator, we should get about 99.0 inches squared. And that's all. It